So things are going pretty terrible for Sunderland. After a miserable season last year that saw them finally relegated from the Premier League, things haven't got any easier in the Championship, with the Black Cats in broad in a battle to avoid robbing into League One. Well how much better would things be for Sunderland right now if they still had all their best players, and that includes the million and one players they've had in on loan in years gone by. Here is Sunderland's best 11 right now if they kept their best players, and note that it says right now, meaning Kevin Phillips and Niall Quinn aren't going to make the cut. Where would the Black Cats be right now if they had this starting 11? Back in the Premier League? In goal is Jordan Pickford. We had a few options in between the sticks with Craig Gordon and Simon Mignolet missing out, but we couldn't not pick Jordan Pickford, probably Sunderland's best player last season, which inspired Evan to spend a potential £30 million on the goalkeeper, the most money Sunderland have ever received for a player. A future England number one, Sunderland certainly wouldn't be near the bottom of the championship if Pickford was still in goal. At right back it's Danny Simpson. The story goes that if you're a right back who goes on loan to Sunderland, you have to end up signing for Newcastle, because that's exactly what happened to DeAndre Yedlin, Javi Mankio and first Danny Simpson. The defender arrived at the Stadium of Light on loan in January 2007 from Manchester United, helping the Black Cats win the championship. This would be one of three promotions from the championship Danny Simpson has won during his career, but he amazingly won the Premier League title with Leicester, which seemed to really piss Jamie Carragher off. I wonder why. Centre back is Johnny Evans. Another loanee and another player who was on loan at Sunderland during their championship winning campaign of 2006-2007 under Roy Keane. Evans would actually have two spells in the North East, returning on loan again in 2008, with the Northern Irish centre-half using his time at Sunderland to progress as a footballer and show why he could be good enough to play for Manchester United. Evans could be playing against Sunderland next season if West Brom suffer relegation and the Black Cats stay up, and if he doesn't leave for £3 million due to the release clause in his contract. Ok, so he probably won't be playing against Sunderland next season. He's alongside Eunice Kabul. The Frenchman had a rough start to his Sunderland career, but my word do they wish they still had him at the heart of their defence. Kabul would only spend one year at the Stadium of Light, signed by Dick Advocat in 2015. After a rough start as he got to grips with actually playing football once again, Kabul would prove to be a hit in red and white, especially under Sam Allardyce and alongside Lamine Kone. Sadly though, Kabul would leave the club in 2016 due to personal reasons, joining Watford for about £4 million. At left back we've got Danny Rose. Now we were blessed with some great options at left back. Ok, we also had Marcus Alonso to choose from, and that's about it, if you ignore Patrick van Aanholt, which is totally cool to do. But no, we've gone with Danny Rose, who really made his name at Sunderland, who were the first team to give him a chance at Premier League football. As Sunderland's left back, Rose began to mature and a large reason he's the player he is today is down to his time at the Stadium of Light. And a fun fact, I once bumped into him in the toilets of Tup Tup nightclub in Newcastle. Don't say we don't give you quality content. In holding midfield we've got Jan Kirchhoff. Incredibly, the German midfielder is still without a club, having left Sunderland last summer. Kirchhoff was signed by Sam Allardyce in January 2016 from Bayern Munich, arriving as a player who fans probably didn't know much about other than that he's quite good on FIFA. A shocking debut against Spurs was soon forgotten about, as Kirchhoff became a vital player sitting in front of the defence. Last season was disrupted by injury and the man is now unemployed, but for a sensational half a season at Sunderland, we have to include Jan Kirchhoff. Next up we've got Jan Mvia. A player that brings a tear to the eyes of Sunderland fans, why or oh why wouldn't Ellis Short fork out the money to sign the Frenchman after his fantastic loan spell in the 2015-16 season? All Sunderland fans remember the deadline day of 2016 and Envia's emotional Instagram story, pleading to know why Sunderland wouldn't answer the phone to him. Maybe he was ringing the wrong number, who knows. He's alongside Kay Sung Young. Another man who had a loan spell on Wearside, Kay Sung Young joined Sunderland in 2013 from Swansea for a year, and what a year it was for the club. The South Korean was part of the best season in recent memory for Sunderland, completing an amazing great escape under Gus Poyet, as well as reaching the League Cup final, where they were beaten by Manchester City. Key was an important player in their League Cup journey, bagging the winner early on in the competition against Chelsea, one of four goals the midfielder scored during his year on loan. On the right flank we've got Emmanuel Jacarini. Before the comments start, no, we're not including Adam Johnson, the man's in prison. Instead you've got Jack Arini, a talented player who maybe wasn't as good as anticipated in the red and white of Sunderland. Signing from Juventus in 2013, the Italian would have two years there before joining Bologna on loan in 2015, eventually going to Euro 2016 still as a Sunderland player. He would join Napoli that summer and Jack Arini is now with Chievo on loan at the age of 32. On the left side it's Danny Welbeck. 
our sixth and final Sunderland loanee and another player the Black Cats borrowed from Manchester United, with former managers Roy Keane and Steve Bruce making good use of their connections at the club. Welbeck really impressed at Sunderland, forming a lethal partnership with Asamo Jan, scoring six goals in 26 games. Since then, Dak Guy Welbs has won his fair share of trophies with both Man United and Arsenal, but more importantly, the man can't finish for love nor money. And up front it's Jermaine Defoe. Sorry banter fans, there was no way we could have picked Nicholas Bentner ahead of the current Bournemouth man. Defoe joined Sunderland in January 2015 in one of the most bizarre spot deals we've ever seen, with goal shy Josie Altador going the other way to Toronto. The former Tottenham striker rolled back the years at Sunderland, scoring 34 goals in 87 Premier League outings. Sadly though, when Sunderland were relegated last season, Defoe had a clause in his contract that allowed him to leave for free, meaning he headed back to Bournemouth while Sunderland prepared for James Vaughan to lead the line. So that's Sunderland's best 11 if they'd kept their best players. Let us know your team in the comments below. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like, share and subscribe.